Hey everybody, here we have this HP 2-in-1 notebook. This is one of three laptops that were um, traded off to me recently by a customer who didn't want them anymore. This one right here does not power up. So, to show you what it does, as you look at the uh, the charge port and the little indicator. Here's what it does. You may have seen how the charge indicator just lit up briefly. If I pull this out and I put it back in, same deal. So the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try my universal laptop adapter that will rule out the power adapter as the culprit in this case okay so I just happen to have another adapter for this style of uh, HP notebook I guess it came with a parts HP laptop that quit working or whatever couldn't find my universal adapter, but I figured this would actually be better. So it's, it is a genuine HP power adapter. And it's just like the original. Or almost just like it. I think different OEM. Let's see what this one does. I think it's the same deal. Yep, same deal. So that rules out the power adapter as our culprit. So for example, we open this up. It will not start at all. Okay, so that being said, let's go in have a look inside this thing see how hard it is to get into it I have to wonder if HP conveniently hidden screws under the feet which they probably did that sounds like a very HP kind of thing So I'm gonna pull up these feet, and what do you know? Hidden screws. Of course, with typical modern day Hewlett Packard laptop design, it should be an expectation to hide screws under the feet. Yep. This yep, this one has one too. So we gotta pull the feet off. Keep our fingers crossed that so we can get them to stick back on there. Which there's a will, there's a way. So in the event that I cannot get this machine to start. I will have to pull the SSD out, provided it has an SSD or hard drive, whichever it has. So that way I can back up the uh, the person's data. So I'm not real sure if the front feet have any hidden screws, but we're going to pull at least one up just to see okay that one does not have a hidden screw under it so I'm gonna pop it back on there I may have to get some some glue to keep it on there
All right, so let's take these remaining screws out, and then we should, keyword should, be able to open this up. Okay. Let's attempt to get in this thing. Got to open the lid up. I guess get my exacto knife in there try to open that up. They have something super thin, like a razor blade. I'm gonna say it's a wee bit unnerving when you don't know where the battery's at. <laughs> Because the last thing you want to do is uh, end up prying where the battery is. You know we don't we don't need that. So it appears on this model, maybe this part lifts up. It appears this one actually has a conventional hard drive in it. I see the hard disk. Oh good, so the area that I was prying in it a minute ago was not where the battery is. Okay, so this literally the trackpad, keyboard, and palm rest just pry up. And I can detach those items. Okay, since the power button is on the side and not attached to the keyboard, we theoretically should be able to turn this on without the keyboard in place. So here's our battery pack. First thing I'll do is try unplugging that. Let's detach that. Leave the cable right there for now. That'll be our first uh, method of troubleshooting. Interesting. So this machine, the battery is literally, it's a two cell. Um, just two cells in series, so 7.6 volt instead of like you know 10.8 or 11.1 volt which whichever it is that you have with three cells in series or, or three sets of lithium ion cells in series the 7.6 volts tells me it's probably like a 4.35 volt cell or you know two lipo cells i mean anyway with the battery disconnected let's try to power this up All right, same deal. The power indicator literally blinks. That's all she wrote. So it's very, very odd. I'm gonna say that, we'll just say it's odd. Could be a motherboard failure, possibly. Don't know for sure.
Again, it just blinks, and that's it. Nothing else. Does not power on. See, even with the battery disconnected. Just for the heck of it, since I am able to do so, let's go ahead and disconnect this little ribbon cable here. That separates the card reader, USB port, and volume controls. A little daughter board there. Not that this is going to really, I don't think it's going to do much of anything, uh, but I figured, what the heck, let's just try it. Isolate something. Same deal, just a little blink. Alright, next. Since the hard disk will be coming out to back up the data, let's go ahead and disconnect this ribbon cable. Let's see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now we have our little dartboard detached battery is detached. You see the cable right there. Hard disk drive is detached. Again, all you get is just a little blink. Nothing else. So literally the only thing else I could detach would be the Wi-Fi adapter, but I have serious doubts that the Wi-Fi is causing our problem, but Alright, so let's go ahead and remove the Wi-Fi card from the motherboard. Alright, one more time. Let's try giving this some power. Same deal. Get a quick little blink from the charge indicator and that's it I'm trying to tell okay it does appear that the motherboard and this over here are connected together to an extent came here said certain on that But to me, it seems like there's something more serious going on. I mean, we did try a separate power adapter. With no change. There's one more thing I could disconnect. The display. The video connection, at least for the display. Let's pop that loose. Again, not really expecting anything, but it's worth a shot. Same deal. Alright. Let's try disconnecting and reconnecting the charge ribbon cable. Or charge cable. If it continues to act up with this, then I'm going to suspect possibly bad board. Maybe bad motherboard. Which I may have a look on eBay and see what motherboards are selling for for these things and make a determination whether it's worth fixing and reselling. Same deal. Just a look just a little blink from the charge indicator. So, that being said, um, I think I'm going to be pulling the hard disk out. So that way I can do a file recovery for the 
former owner, owner of this machine. And what I'll probably do is I'll have a look on Fleabay and see what motherboard drive for these. And something interesting to note, for what I'm seeing, this notebook has no active cooling. There's no heatsink fan. It's still, I mean, there's a heatsink. But it appears that it's just, well, it's almost like it's bonded to the, uh, the casing. I mean, you got this copper right here. It's just like it's bonded to the case. But right here, there's a fan where there would be a fan connector, but there's nothing there. There's no cooling fan. At least so I can see. There's nothing on the back either, no vent or nothing. Maybe that'll explain what's going on with this thing. Maybe it overheated due to lack of, uh, well, you know, <laughs> lack of cooling. It's got a, uh, it's got a Pentium, it says. Maybe it's Atom based. It's like what's in the TV box slim that's in the living room. It's got a Celeron, which I think is like Atom based. It has a similar style heatsink. It does have active cooling. It does have a fan, but the fan only has to come on once in a while because the CPU has a very low TDP. Which would explain, of course, this machine having just the uh, 7.6 volt battery instead of the 10.8 slash 11.1 volt battery that you normally find in notebooks. Interesting though, because even the Acer Aspire 1 netbooks from back in the day had a three cell, at least a three cell battery, three cells in series. But those older netbooks were, I would say, more power hungry than this. That being said, um, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, I suspect bad board. We tried two different power adapters. I've disconnected this daughter board here. I've disconnected the screen, disconnected the internal battery, disconnected the hard disk drive, disconnected the Wi-Fi card. No go. Anyways, um, that wraps up for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to QQ channel, and be sure to tick the bell that way you get notified of new video posts. Also, I recommend following QQ Company on Facebook. A link is in the video description. In addition to computer tech videos, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX. Links are available at the end of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching and your support.